Later this month, an unusual alliance of Australian parliamentarians will make its way to Washington, D.C. in the cause of freedom for WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. The group includes Liberal, Labor, Greens and independent politicians, all of whom are united in the belief that the Australian citizen has already spent too long in effective detention, whether that was imposed or by choice. So they'll work the capital in Washington, D.C., trying to find support among Democrat and Republican representatives and senators. Green Senator David Shoebridge will be on the delegation for one. Here are his reasons for going. From day one, there were politics behind the identifying and the charging of Julian Assange because he was telling the truth. Telling the truth about war crimes, telling the truth about the United States military and telling the truth about military campaigns that Australia was a key ally of the United States in. So it's our job to go to Washington and tell the truth about this prosecution. A shameful political prosecution of an Australian for the crime of being a journalist and telling the truth. And the fundamental truth we are going to be conveying in Washington, which is so often riven by partisan conflict, that on this issue of bringing, Australia, of bringing an Australian, Julian Assange, home, of ending the prosecution, there is a powerful and growing unity in Australian politics and that needs to be respected by our closest ally. All right, well, Nationals frontbencher Barnaby Joyce will be heading to Washington along with David Shoebridge and others to discuss his mission in support of Julian Assange and his own reasons for going there. Barnaby Joyce joins us in the studio now. Welcome back, Barnaby. You just heard Thank David you, Shoebridge explain yeah. his reasons. Are yours exactly aligned with his? Uh, probably not exactly. Uh, look, I don't want to go to the United States and pick a fight. I don't think that's going to help us. You know, we, we want to explain our rationale. And it's on extraterritoriality, and I always stumble around that. Yep. Uh, the idea that one of your listeners, or you, that you don't, didn't commit a crime in Australia, you weren't a citizen of the United States, you weren't in the United States when this action happened, but somehow we deport you from here to the United States to serve a term of 175 years. It, it, uh, it's a very, very bad, um, it's very, very bad precedent. Mm. And I just believe as an Australian citizen, more than anything about Julian Assange, as an Australian citizen, we have a duty to say, no, 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 we're not doing that. Uh, and if we, we've got four people now in Australia who are charged by the Chinese government for crimes. So this is a pretty bad precedent. What happens if they say, well, if you do it to that fellow, why? We want ours as well. Yeah. You know, we want you to treat us like you treat you know, like that happens. So Very dangerous. In your own mind, how does this cul-de-sac that Julian Assange finds himself in? How is it opened up? Is it through political discussions in Washington D.C.? I've already said mm -hmm. I think that you're holding meetings with Republicans yes. and Democrats alike. Is that the pathway out of this, or is it through some legal plea bargaining process? I think it really needs political movement and I think th that where a lot of people are landing and it's great to see both the Prime Minister and Peter Dutton uh, both on the, the same page saying enough is enough and I think that's a key issue. Enough is enough. If you want retribution, well I think you've actually got it from this person. You've, he's been he's self-incarcerated in the Ecuadorian embassy and he's been in Belmarsh prison which is the highest security prison in England. I, I don't quite know why where I think you've got one hour a day to, to of outside well, you know, out of your sure, cell. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think there are a lot of people in a lot of areas now saying, I think this should be put aside. And remember that Julian didn't steal anything. That was Bradley Manning, now Chelsea Manning. Now Chelsea Manning is walking the streets as a free person. Mm. And I don't know why this Australian citizen goes to jail for 175 years. And if it's by reason of publishing stolen material from then Bradley Manning, well, you better go to jail and so better a lot of the other journalists who all published it. Yeah, sure. So you regard him as a journalist? Uh, well, he got to walk the award, so obviously the journalists just regard him as a journalist. All right, OK. You say there's a political element to this, uh, but how does that square, if that's true, with Joe Biden's pretty short shrift that he's given to Anthony Albanese when this has been raised before, that at least under his pen uh, there's not going to be any great move from the White House on Julian Assange? How do you reconcile that with the approach that you'll be taking in Washington? Well, if it was your brother or uh, that was in um, in prison in Belmarsh, would you 
want us to continue our efforts or would you just want us to give up? You know, you, you've, got to, you, you've got to set your compass and decide that whether this is a, a right thing to do on the principle, on the principle that Australian citizens are not sent to third countries when they never committed a crime in Australia, they're an Australian citizen and they were never in the country where they're about to be sent mm. for an apparent crime in that country. Uh, so I, I just think that a lot of... That's why so many Australians, when they've actually considered it and put aside, uh, you know, I, I don't like Julian Assange and thought about it on a principled process, go, no, no, I, that's... I don't... No, we've got to do something about this. Last one on this, but because we do want to move on to some yeah. other topics of the day. But you will no doubt encounter people in the US capital who will say that uh, Julian Assange presented or still presents some sort of national security risk to the Five Eyes nations collectively, obviously including Australia. How do you persuade them that he never did or that he no longer does? Well, you'd say, well, then uh, how, how is it that... Chelsea Manning is walking the streets as a free person because Julian had no capacity to steal anything. It was given to him by a person inside, which was then Bradley Manning. Mm. Um, and I, I suppose you just say, I think that after a period of time, um, is it worth a person's life? Is what he did, which was not a crime in Australia, I mean, do you see how this creates problems for us? Because I tell you, I know a couple of Americans who really did commit crimes in Australia, full swearing of documents, very serious, punishable by time in jail, and that was um, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. So <laughs> are we going to have them extradited back to Australia so they can go to jail for the period that is part of that conviction? Well, of course not. The Americans yeah. would never countenance that, and I hope a form of empathy and understanding and the quid pro quo of how these things work.